Rodolfo, you talk about mind being co-dimensional with brain and that mind and neural activity are not just one causing the other, but the same thing. They seem so radically different. How can you say that? Well, I can say that because when I measure the electrical activity of the brain, when I measure what cells can do, I find that the elements that define the limits of, of mind are also the same that define the limits of the physiology. So I give you, a, for instance, if I um, move an object in front of your retina at a certain speed, if the speed is of a certain level, I cannot see detail. Yes. In order to see detail, I have to move it at a certain speed. That is, somehow uh, my ability to see is totally limited by the ability that the system has to, in this case, relate information. Conceding all of that, yes. it's still a different phenomenon that you see electrical activity in nerve cells and you have the feeling of seeing a rabbit run across your point of view. Right, okay. So the question is, are they co-dimensional? Is the size of the retina, the speed of which it can do, similar to the perception you have? Yes. And the answer is fine. So they're co-dimensional. Yes. Okay. Okay. So we have, indeed, the limits, the limits of our mind are given by the limits of the physics of the brain. Yes. Okay, now. Uh, the question then is, well, but the question you're asking is, is the brain there just to, to chase these rabbits? Why is it that we do other things? And the answer is luscious. We have to compete with other human beings. We have driven evolution by our coexistence. If you are not bright enough, you will die. <laughs> if you're bright enough, you simply won't survive. And we know that there have been discussions, there have been discord among races, among groups forever. You know, Homo sapiens is one event, but you remember know, and you know, and things that also happened that were simply not equivalent. So what happens is we create our own niche, and the niche is now intellectual. Oh, wait a minute. But in order to survive, there are certain things we have to do. We have to catch prey. We have to avoid uh, being attacked by uh, neighbors. Or we have to be stronger. We have to be clever if we're not physically stronger. We have to use our brain. So all of that we can select for. But why today can we understand the universe? How can we understand what happened in the first uh, uh, 10 to the minus 36 second of the beginning of the Big Bang? Or how can we understand the questions we're talking about now? That, what, what possible survival value does that have? Oh, it's wonderful. Thank you. <laughs> it's a beautiful question. So how do, you, how do you explain it? Okay. So how is it that we um, refine ourselves by having other human beings around? How do we do it? What is the mechanism? And the mechanism is known as curiosity. Curiosity, which is what we have huh. some children. We explore. We need to know. We need to know because this is the only way we're going to feed this furnace we have. Oh. Uh, it, it, it has billions of possibilities. And the answer is, what are we doing here? So, so it is that, that, that desire to understand a fixed action pattern, that, that emotion that drives us to understand. Okay. So, so what you're saying is the fixed action pattern of the brain, which is so important in so many ways, that one of these fixed action patterns that determines our survival is curiosity. Absolutely. Curiosity to find a cave that what's in it, well, if there's a saber-toothed tiger is there and we, we can, our curiosity helps us, we survive. But that same curiosity, 10,000 years later, can't understand Except, the universe. But, no, but you see, but the, the, the next thing that happens, which is really completely mind-blowing, is that the curiosity forces you to analyze the external world and to dream while you are awake oh. about things that being outside could be different inside your head. And then you become creative. Mm. You actually manipulate these events yeah. that have, they are the product of curiosity yeah. into new fixed action patterns, into new ideas, into new thoughts. So it is the ability, to, and remember, the thing that really separates us from the rest of the animal is the fact that we can make outside events that relates to our dreams, that we can make dreams become reality outside. This is, I mean, we can make a, a device that flies. We, we can design something that flies based on having studied the details, the curiosity that allows us, that has forced, has forced us to really have such a good 
description internally that we can actually make it. And the reason that occurred is because evolution didn't require us to fly. Absolutely. We must compete. And that is it. It is, in fact, we, we ourselves have made, have, we have elevated ourselves from our bootstraps. So what made us compete at the, at the rudimentary level of, of, of primitive society, that curiosity, was evolutionary absolutely better empowered. better weapons better better right. facilities and in today's world this expresses itself in marvelous and wondrous ways absolutely but it is still founded on those same uh, fixed action and, patterns and, and and therefore you have this incredible dichotomy that we are incredibly inventive incredible capable of doing inc absolutely breathtaking technology but we kill each other yeah we have not been able to get that one, our arms around that one. We continue to be rather primitive when we consider our emotions. Which is another kind of fixed action Which pattern. Which is another kind of, absolutely. Now, you've also talked about this concept of this internal subjectivity, this qualia, which is terribly debated by philosophers. Some say it's a, you need a soul to understand that. Others say it doesn't exist at all. But you, you've said that that's so important in this process that it's the real ghost in the machine. It's the it, real it, soul. It, in right. The way. It, it is. It is the epicenter of the development of the nervous system, as far as I'm concerned. Which means that it must be very present from the very beginning. Very that, fundamental. That, that what we are doing is elaborating on it by by superposition, by connectivity. We are actually enriching. It is like single notes that we make into a, 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 a symphony. So, but without the sound, you will not ever do it. So it is the sound, it is the, the small bits of, of uh, cellularity that is capable of, um, for lack of a better word, let's say in the case of, of, of uh, the retina, the fact that this cell is actually capable of receiving uh, a uh, a uh, atom, a, a, a photon, and converting into synaptic transmission. So it is, it is precisely, precisely that type of, of, of uh, transformation that we're talking about. And therefore, the consciousness that occurs when these elements of qualia come together with all these cells, and you have these billions of cells and systems, is the mechanism by which evolution occurred, as you see it, and now expresses itself through the fixed action pattern of curiosity into the unbelievable things that humanity can understand. Absolutely. The, the, the difference between uh, Homo sapiens and the rest, it's our, our incredible curiosity, our incredible desire to examine and understand. 